All right, so this is the start of section six, which is Highway 27 to the Highway 298 trailhead. Um, this one here, you can call Lori at the Bluebell, and if you look in the description at the bottom of this video, you'll see a whole list of all the people who shuttle, and Lori and her phone number are there. For this one, if you decide on your own that you wanna park here, be aware that this, uh, so you see the highway out there, and it has this road that comes in, this little like driveway before you get to this big old parking area. So don't come through here expecting that you can see the parking area from the highway because you're not gonna see it. All you're gonna see is the start of this little drive up. Hot off the presses. Right after mile 122, you're gonna see this tree with the blaze and it's got some rocks piled up underneath it. Look to your left. You'll see a white blaze. This is a brand new Vista that they're getting started with a nice view. They don't even have it named yet. So this is literally hot off the presses. So let's go check it out. Just follow the white blazes. It's a little bit scrubby, but I can see the blazes leading me and the rock trying to trip me. Wow, that's really pretty. So this is a nice little spot. The guy who told us about this, Danny, he's a uh, district captain for this section of trail and he took a picture the other day of the uh, sunrise here, and look at this picture. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful spot. But today, it's a little bit hazy, but still a really cool view. This is John Archer Shelter, and I don't know if you can see it, but we can see the roof of it right down there. And John Archer Shelter has a beautiful view. It has a front porch built onto the shelter. It's got fire pit, table, but there's no water sources here because we're at the top of a hill. And there's also really not much for flat level ground for setting up a tent or anything. So if you like to tent outside of the shelters, you're probably gonna have a harder time at this one because of the slope. But it is a really beautiful shelter. If you're not familiar with John Archer, he was the district ranger for this area, and I believe he holds some kind of record for how long he was the district ranger. I think he told me it was something like 26 years or something. I'll pop it up on the screen how long, because it was a really long time, and he still has a crazy love for this area. And he was also very instrumental in the building of this trail and in the whole shelter system that we have here. They saw it on the AT and said, wow, we should do that on the Washita Trail. So that's why we have these shelters. John Archer Shelter is about a mile from the Highway 27 trailhead. And it is a climb. You get to that trailhead and it immediately gets you climbing. And then you come up here. Ahead of us here, off in the distance, see that mountain? That is Sandwick Mountain. It's got quite a lot of history around it. It was the place of a shootout. It started off when Bill Potter was killed by Jack and his brother Bud. Daniel was their last name. And then there was this big manhunt and they had found some cover where there's some fallen trees over a ditch. And the sheriff made a guy named John Coker take them to where he felt like they might be. And he did take them and was able to find where they were at but they Jack and Bud had the high ground and there was a big shootout the sheriff and one of his deputies were fatally wounded and there was another deputy who was just regular wounded he lived so they blamed John Coker for leading them into an ambush when he was actually forced to take them there and he was arrested and thrown in jail and then later on a bunch of vigilantes came out and broke them out of jail and hung them over the Danville Bridge. 
So, uh, along with another guy named Dr. Flood, and he was being held for helping to take care of uh, the brothers and another guy traveling with them named Ryle Blocker. So Doc Flood helped treat him, and they put him in prison too for helping them out. And he was the other guy who got hung over the Danville Bridge. And cool fun fact, the Danville Bridge was falling into ruin. It was no longer used, and eventually some historical people came and did a restoration. They saved the bridge, and that bridge that those guys were hung off of now stands as part of a walking path by the Danville, the town of Danville's city hall. And they didn't hang them over the side of the bridge. It was a bowstring type bridge, so they hung them over the top. And the only re the only thing that the vigilante group got in trouble for was disturbing the peace because they left the bodies hanging there so all the morning traffic had to go drive under the hanging corpses. There's a whole lot to this story and I've been kicking around the idea of going down to the Bill Potter shelter and sitting down and telling y'all the whole story. So still kicking around the idea but it really is an incredible story. I mean they could make a movie of it. I'm going to step off trail here for a second to show you guys something cool. This is an old Indian pointer tree. So you can see that this part of the trunk here was very thick. So what they would do is they would use straps when the tree was just a sapling to pull it down into this position. And then eventually the tree would just start to grow this way. And this one, it looked like the main core of the tree had actually gotten old and fallen off, but it would have grown up like that anyway. But this one looks like it had another sprout come out the top of it, and then it actually turned into a tree. The reason they did this with these trees is because they would be pointing to different things. Sometimes it would be pointing to where they were camped. Other times it would be pointing to a good water source or a good area for hunting. You'll see a lot of these where it kind of looks that way, but they're a younger tree. And what happens is when it's a little sapling, another tree falls, boom, and it pushes a sapling down. And then it grows into a style that looks similar to this, but it's a very young tree. This is an old one. So we're walking along and I was like, ooh, that stick looks like a snake. It is a snake. He's very dark colored, and you can see how he looks kind of kinky right now. So sometimes that happens because they're dehydrated. Other times they'll do that as a defensive mechanism so that they look more like a stick. And he definitely looked like a stick. So they are harmless, but they will bite if they feel threatened. This is to remind you guys, the snakes are out. We've already run into one guy on this uh, hike and he had a gun with him and he said it was for hogs and snakes. So please don't shoot the snakes. Don't, they're, they're just out here existing and we can't kill them for existing, especially when we're here in their backyard. Again, watch where you're walking. They are out here and please don't kill them. Okay. That's the end of my little, uh, what would you call that? Snake Chastising? <laughs> my snake PSA. <laughs> this trail was primarily built by Green Thumbers. And the Green Thumb program was similar to the Civilian Conservation Corps, except it was just an Arkansas state thing. So it was a way to help men from the ages of 55 to 65 get some extra money. So, because Times are a little tough, so um, anyway, this midpoint of the trail here, um, actually it's kind of top of the trail, we just passed Sandlick Mountain, <laughs> so this would be the top, so what was I saying? I squirreled out on you guys, oh, so they had to get these old guys up to this midpoint of the area of the trail to continue building it without having to hike in as far as we just have. So they decided to make an access to get up here to do the building of the trail. And 
was they were working on it. All of a sudden, they started to uncover another existing road that was already built, and it turned out to be an old Civil War path. So they just had to cut back the growth, and that was it. It was done already. So apparently, even in the Civil War, people were up here on Sandwich Mountain. I don't know if you guys notice, I kind of like history. <laughs> This is the shelter turnoff for Uncle Bill Potter Shelter. And again, shelters, any access trails are going to be white blazed. So you would follow the white blazes. And the white blazes go down this hill about a quarter mile. And then when you get down there to the shelter, it's a really beautiful shelter. It sits right on the side of the Irons Fork. And so obviously you have your water access right there. And last time I was down there, there were some folding chairs at the shelter. But remember when I talked about the whole shootout and everything that happened on Sand Lake Mountain because of the manhunt where they were trying to hunt down the guys that had killed Bill Potter? Well, that shelter is named after William Potter. William Potter, from everything I had read, was kind of like the town bully. So I was wondering why they would name the shelter after a guy who was kind of a bully and uh, John Archer had said that when they were trying to decide on a name they were thinking about going with something having to do with the Jack and Bud the two Daniels brothers I guess one of his one of his rangers came up to him and said you know there's still a lot of potters living in this area so they decided to keep the peace and just name it Uncle Bill Potter that's the history on that. You remember at the Highway 27 trailhead how I was telling you how Lori is such a uh, pivotal part of the Washita Trail culture? They named a vista after her. And I would say it's well deserved. All right, this is the Iron Spark Crossing. So you come on down the trail over a bunch of rocks. So watch your step. And then you get over here to the Irons Court Crossing. Now this is one that when there's flooding, it can get too high and you can't get across it. So um, if you're on this side and you're heading eastbound like we are, just before we turned off the road, you can put a tent up there. Um, it's not an active road. So, but today it's pretty low, so looks like we're not going to have any problem getting across it. But if there's heavy rains coming, sometimes it might be worth hiking the extra mileage to get past this. This right here is where the trail poops you out by Highway 298, which is where we are right up the hill here. And the arrow says, go this way. We're gonna go this way. You will need to get up on the road to walk across the bridge. Right there is the Washita River. Okay, I wanna show you <clears throat> I'm going to show you where to get on this, but if you go up there on the other side of this and then there's this dirt road that comes around doo -doo 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 -doo, and it takes you off right at this beach here and this is a place to get water and also soak your feet because we've learned that feels really good. 
So nice place to get some pictures. There's going to be a spot up over there that uh, you can get a beautiful picture from. So don't forget to get that picture. Okay, so now we are just over the bridge. And you see this road right down here? That's the one I was showing you earlier. So you just keep going down that road and it takes you right to the river so you can get some water. The trailhead over here, if you park by this trailhead, be aware that this is one of the trailheads we have had issues with break-ins. So it does have a parking area, but because it's on the side of a highway, locals will come by and see that vehicle still sitting there after several days. We've had someone who had wheels stolen off their vehicle. We've had several that it was broken into and they siphoned the fuel out of the tank. So they showed up, their car was broken into and their tank was empty. So I would recommend parking at the Blue Bell instead of this one and having Lori give you a ride here down the road to 298. Because don't forget, the Blue Bell also sits on 298. Okay, so this is the 298 parking area. So it's a good size area, but as you can see, it's right off the highway. We checked and we have AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon cell service here. Ooh, look at all the pretty butterflies. So now we have turned back onto the trail. And has another one of these fantastic new trailhead signs that we were talking about at the uh, Black Fork Trailhead. Okay, let's go hike. Watch the top pinnacle, eight miles. All right, as you're hiking along, sometimes you will see blazes that look like this. Pretty much like, this is a pinkish color, but red we've also seen in the Black Fork area. And then, also another very common color to mark private property is purple. You'll see a lot of purple in Texas, but along this trail we've seen several different ones. Purple, red, and then now this pink. Alright, that place I was talking about for taking a picture is right here. North Fork Vista. And they actually have a sign now to show you, but it's a really pretty view of the bend of the river. But in the autumn, when the trees are starting to uh, change color, this is incredibly beautiful. All right, now back to the trail and pretty soon here, we're gonna start climbing up Blue Washita Mountain. And once we get on top of that mountain, there's some nice cruising up there. You're gonna have some slight up and downs and one decent climb kind of in the middle and then towards the end of it where you get to Washita Pinnacle. But for the most part, you can just really cruise on it. So might be something that you want to make plans to have a little bit longer day on. There is a shelter up there that we'll look at called Blue Mountain Shelter and we'll show you that when we get there. Time for us to go cruise. We have reached Blue Mountain Shelter. There's our little sign. There's a shelter down there. It's one of the older style shelters that kind of looks like a uh, log cabin and it's got one of the newer porches added to it. There is no water source up here except for like where the shelter is, where the shelter is right there. If you kind of go towards the back and towards the other side of the mountain, you'll see a little worn path you could follow. That is a spring, but a lot of times it's just a little muddy hole. It's not a reliable water source and it is only seasonal during wet months. But again, because we are actually on a through hike right now, we're not going to have time to really stop at every little shelter to show you, which I would love to do, but they kind of all look the same. I also wanted to mention that in addition to the Blue Mountain Shelter being dry, so you'll want to carry enough water up here to camp with, but also the whole top of this thing is dry. so. Make sure you have enough water for the whole thing. 
there are some ups and downs, but for the most part, once you get up here, it's pretty cruisy. Good evening. We are at Big Bear Shelter, which is one of my favorites. And it just sits in this beautiful area. And down over there, doop, doop, down in there, that's the creek. And it's just a really, really pretty area right here. This is my second favorite shelter. Okay, this is just past the mile 57 marker. And, or sorry, 157 marker. And this is Big Blakely Creek. There's a bridge that goes over it. It can be slick when it's raining out. And right now there is water in it. But when it's a bit on the dry side, of the season. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in. See my blurry giant finger pointing at that big pool back there? You can usually find water in there even if it's a little bit drier. Yeah, maybe 50 feet, but you'll just bushwhack along the side. But we actually saw fish living in there. So it kind of makes me think that the water doesn't completely dry up there. Otherwise, those fish room for a bad day. We're drowning in air. Ah. And then right after you step off the bridge, there's a fairly decent campsite right here. It's not crazy level, but you could definitely put a small tent. All right, we are coming up on the turn off for Moonshine Shelter. And there, it does show there's water near the shelter, but it is a wildlife pond, and I wanted to show you what it looks like, because I haven't shown any wildlife ponds yet. I've talked about them, but they all kind of look the same, so hold on to your skirt tails, because it's kind of gross. Ta-da! You can see the water has a lot of tannins in it. I mean, it's drinkable. It's clear, and as we get into the less rainy season they do tend to get a little bit darker but that is the water source it's not the best tasting water but i wanted to get a chance to show you guys what it looks like and they're pretty much all the same they kind of look like that and if you need water in a pinch it's there it's drinkable as long as you filter it not a big deal and here is the shelter turnoff for moonshine shelter so it's a little walk down to the trail it's not bad in fact I think I can see the roof eh, strappy strap go away strap uh, strap I think I can see the roof right over there but so it's not a long 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 walk <laughs> it's not a long walk like the other some of the other shelters are but it's a little bit away from the trail. I recall last time I stayed there, it was maybe one or two bars of LTE. And, but up here at the shelter sign, we've got three bars. So, and if you are planning to stay at the mountain time, then this is the place that you're gonna wanna give them a call and let them know you're about an hour out. Well, or more or less, depending on how you hike. We do about two mile an hour. And it's mostly downhill from here. That is all. Wait, that's not all. Moonshine Shelter got its name because when they were building it and they were trying to decide on the name, they had a report of a still in the area. Yep, around that time, moonshining was still a problem. So, they got a report of a nearby still some shiners had going, and they had to go take care of it. And they decided to name this shelter Moonshine Shelter. Alright, so we are now at the 
section that the Highway 7 trailhead, which ends Section 7, which was Highway 298 to Highway 7. And now we are going to pick up our ride to the mountain time, and I see him already waiting for us.